Good morning, and it's a beautiful morning today. As fall is just starting and leaves are starting to change. Welcome to our worship service. I don't know if you look closely at your bulletin, but there's been a mix-up. In one place it says uh, the service starts at 9 o'clock. I think it was in the newsletter also that way, and other places at 10 and 9.30. So anyway, I showed up promptly for the service at 9 o'clock, and I'm waiting here. And sure enough, just uh, two people showed up, Mr. Soli and Mrs. Wicken. But we had a nice conversation while we waited outside. I didn't have the right keys. Uh, I have the keys for Dallas, but not here. So it all... Uh, that kind of that reminds me of a story about the pastor who uh, came to church on a pretty stormy morning in winter, and uh, he's waiting there in the church. And sure enough, one guy shows up, uh, the farmer, and uh, they wait a while. And nobody else comes to the door; just an empty church. And the, the pastor says, "Well, I, you know, nobody's here. I, maybe we shouldn't have our service today." And the farmer and the farmer says, "Well, I'm a farmer, and even when the cattle aren't in the barn, I still have to feed them." So the pastor's taken back a bit. He says, "Oh well, fine. Yeah, we'll have our service." So the pastor went through the whole service, including the long sermon that he prepared, finished, and he goes to the back, and the farmer leaves his pew and comes out, and the farmer says, "Well, I do feed them, but I don't give them the whole load." So. <laughs> But I'm sure glad you are all here, here at 9.30 at the right time, and we can have our worship service. i just take note of a few things with our schedule. We do have confirmation on Wednesday. Uh, take note of that, please. And um, the thing with the changes that are happening, Rhonda is changing her office hours a little bit, so take note that she'll be in on Tuesdays and Wednesdays uh, from 9.30 to 2. And then you can contact the office other times as you wish. Um, the noisy offerings this month are, are designated for Carl Nelson, so please keep that in mind and please be generous that way. Is there anything else I need to review? Such a beautiful morning, beautiful day. Uh, so much to praise God and in our worship today. So God bless us. <clears throat> If you'd please turn to the order for confession and forgiveness in your bulletin. I'll ask you please to rise for this and also for the prayer of the day. <clears throat> Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God whose teaching is life, whose presence is sure, and whose love is endless. Amen. Let us confess our sins to the one who welcomes us with an open heart. God, our comforter, like lost sheep we've gone astray. We gaze upon abundance and see scarcity. We turn our faces away from injustice and oppression. We exploit the earth with our apathy and greed. Free us from our sin, gracious God. Listen when we call out to you for help. Lead us by your love to love our neighbors as ourselves. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God by the gift of grace in Jesus Christ. God makes you right. Receive with glad heart the forgiveness of all your sins. And if you re please remain standing, let us join in the prayer of the day. Together, O oh God, our teacher and guide, you draw us to yourself and welcome us as beloved children. Help us to lay aside all envy and selfish ambition that we may walk in your ways of wisdom and understanding as servants of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. <clears throat> Amen. Please be seated. Let's join in singing. We praise you, O God.
first reading is from Jeremiah 11, 18 through 20. It was the Lord who made it known to me, and I knew that you showed me their evil deeds. But I was like a gentle lamb led to the slaughter, and I did not know it was against me that they devised schemes, saying, Let us destroy the tree with its fruit. Let us cut him off from the land of the living, so that his name will no longer be remembered. But you, O Lord of hosts, who judge righteously, who try the heart and the mind, let me see your retribution upon them, for to you I have committed my cause. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm is Psalm 54, and please read responsibly. Save me, O God, by your name. In your might, defend my cause. Hear my prayer, O God. Give ear to the words of my mouth. For strangers have risen up against me, and the ruthless have sought my life, those who have no regard for God. Behold, God is my helper. It is the Lord who sustains my life. Render evil to those who spy on me. In your faithfulness, destroy them. I will offer you a freewill sacrifice and praise your name, O Lord, for it is good. For you have rescued me from every trouble, and my eye looks down on my enemies. The second reading is James 3, 13 through 4, 3, 7, and 8, 8. Who is wise and understanding among you? Show by your good life that your works are done with gentleness born of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not be boastful and false to the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from heaven, but is earthly, unspiritual, devilish. For where there is envy and selfish ambition, there will also be disorder and wickedness of every kind. But the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without a trace of partiality or hypocrisy. And a harvest of righteousness is sown in peace for those who make peace. Those conflicts and disputes among you, where do they come from? Do they not come from your cravings that are at war within you? You want something and do not have it, so you commit murder. And you covet something and cannot obtain it, so you engage in disputes and conflicts. You do not have because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask wrongly, in order to spend what you get on your pleasures. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please remain seated for the Holy Gospel, which is recorded in Mark chapter 9, beginning with verse 30. Jesus and the disciples went on and passed through Galilee. He did not want anyone to know it, for he was teaching his disciples, saying to them, The Son of Man is to be betrayed into human hands, and they'll kill him. And three days after he is killed, he will rise again. But they did not understand what he was saying, and they were afraid to ask him. Then they came to Capernaum, and when he was in the house, he asked them, What were you arguing about on the way? But they were silent, for on the way they had argued with one another who would be the greatest. He sat down, called the twelve, and said to them, Whoever wants to be first must be last of all and servant of all. Then he took a little child and put it among them, and, say, and taking it in his arms, he said to them, Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. The Gospel of Christ. Thanks be. Uh, our sermon hymn is number is Guide Me Ever, Great Redeemer. Redeemer, pilgrim through this barren land. 
gospel lesson in verse 30 we read Jesus and the disciples went down and passed through Galilee he did not want anyone to know it for he was teaching his disciples and saying to them now listen the son of man is to be betrayed into human hands and they will kill him and after three days and three days after being killed he will rise again let us pray May the words of my mouth, the meditations of our hearts, be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. The Gospel of Mark is the shortest of the Gospels, but even in Mark, we see that recorded three different times, Jesus deliberately and forcefully tells his followers, his 12 disciples, it's necessary for the Son of Man to go up to Jerusalem to be betrayed, to be killed, and then on the third day, rise again. There's just no doubt, no question in his mind as he communicates to the disciples that that's why he was going up to Jerusalem, to suffer and to die. And yet, despite that, they continued to focus in on the fact of his amazing power his attraction to crowds, his leadership qualities, and they recognized and trusted and hoped that he would be the political leader. So the chapter before this, he has warned them, I will be killed on the cross. In this passage, he tells them it's necessary to suffer and to die. And then in chapter 14, again, he talks about his death. And his followers just had the most difficult time in understanding that the path of serving God requires sacrifice, even as it requires reward. So there's two challenges, I think, that we can recognize and help and, and, and think of it in terms of that, that life is an investment and life is a journey in the teaching of Jesus. And if we could think along those lines today, on each occasion, the disciples refused to hear or understand what he was saying. On this occasion, they immediately continued their argument about who's going to be the biggest and the most important official when Jesus becomes king and sets up the government. They're so preoccupied and interested in which of them could have the most power and wealth in Jesus' kingdom that they couldn't contemplate that this leader was in fact anticipating his execution. And you and I are challenged to recognize the seriousness and the soberness of that path. So Jesus again has to uh, declare that he first must suffer and crucify and be buried before he rises again. And he takes time to deliberately explain to them that although he will become king, the hierarchy would be upside down. The last would be first. The weak would be powerful. The poor would become wealthy. And those without honor or power, such as little children, they would be the ones who are most valued and respected. 
On each of those occasions, Jesus challenges his followers to recognize that his journey required him to travel through stages of service and discipline in conflict with the powers of sin and death before he won the victory and the reward of resurrection and power and authority as the Messiah King. <clears throat> you and I are very much tempted to be like the disciples and to focus on all the blessings of life that we receive following Jesus and as God's creatures without remembering the disciples, the disciplines and the labor that we must undertake in order to follow Jesus as his disciples. So let's remind ourselves again why the sacrifice and the discipline are so necessary as we ourselves follow Jesus. And mostly, I would just like to recognize that life is a matter of both being a journey and also an investment. Jesus says, what does it profit a man to gain the whole world but forfeit his life? With pronouncements and parables, Jesus challenges us to store riches up in heaven where your wealth is, there will your heart also be. Any and every financial advisor is going to insist on the importance of our saving and investing a portion of our income. My father's wise, wonderful sister, Aunt Margaret, and we all had an aunt like that, huh? I uh, shared with us the stern stewardship lessons that her, heart, that her family learned during the hard years of the Depression. She said, save 10% of what you earn and give away 10% of what you earn. Then the remaining 80% 80, 80 will be more than enough to pay for what you really need. She just repeated that over and over. My dad followed his sister's advice. And on the whole, my brothers and sisters have pretty much benefited from my good advice. It's forced us uh, to be disciplined about what we buy. It brings us confident about being able to pay unexpected crises. But mostly, it enables us to earn interest on what we invest rather than to pay interest on what we borrow, okay? Just the discipline of setting aside 10% in savings, in investing, removes a huge uh, set of worries, but it requires the discipline. After 40 years of employment, I can tell you, things do add up. <laughs> Jesus knew all about money matters. Remember, he had both income and expenses when he supported his family as a carpenter. So it's significant that he could compare the spiritual management of life to the financial management as he proclaimed the kingdom of heaven. First, his message insists that our resurrection after death is something that we must take into account. There will be a resurrection are we planning and preparing for that? Over and over, directly and in parables, he declared that death is a crisis that no one es can escape. He himself would not escape it. He was telling them, I must die on the cross. And he described the wisdom of those who prepared for death and the foolishness of those who don't. So life is a matter of investment. But also, Jesus teaches that life is a journey. That's something that we can uh, readily understand, since most of life operates in that way. But during this journey, as we invest in the disciplines, not just of finance, but also of education, in our career, in our citizenship, in our health, and our friendship, and other such things like this, we invariably receive back a much greater return than what we, what we have put out. It's Jesus' clear and consistent challenge to us that we store up for yourselves treasure in heaven where moths and rust and robbers cannot deplete our reward. <clears throat> you might think of it also in terms of our, as we face our inevitable death and resurrection, Jesus offers something like an insurance policy. Again, that's a familiar arrangement to us. We pay out a set premium for health, home, auto, or other insurance on the understanding that if there's an accident, 
The provider will pay the cost of the repairs and the restoration. It's a proven way to guarantee assistance from someone else against the risk of some cat catastrophe beyond our control. So our whole uh, habit and, and, uh, and discipline of uh, paying into insurance is just an obvious uh, experience that we have. Likewise, the Apostle Paul compares discipleship to taking a risk. If there's no resurrection, our preaching is useless, and so is our faith. We are to be pitied more than all people, but, then he goes on and says, but if the dead are not raised, let us eat, drink, and, for, and, and drink, for tomorrow we die. But in fact, Christ has been raised, the first fruits of all who have died. Like the other apostles, Paul witnessed the power of Jesus over the ca catastrophe of death, and he offered up the benefits of that power in all of his teaching. How is it that we make investments in eternal resurrection life? We spend our talents on things that are eternal. Jesus, the Son of God, is eternal, so let's invest in following him as our example and our savior. Something else that goes to heaven is our character. We're made in the image of God, and that is eternal. So we must control and develop our mind and our wills and emotions knowing that they go to heaven. Our neighbors are, are the family of God. They are eternal. So we must care for them and do unto them as we do for ourselves. We must be investing in our neighbors. And finally, our prayers, praise, confessions, and offerings, they go to God who is eternal. So we must make the sacrifices necessary to lead a life of discipleship and service in the kingdom of God, particularly in our involvement at, at our church here and also in our private devotions. As we follow our Lord Jesus, God has given us uh, most of a journey through life, which in fact is blessed and, and has countless blessings as we travel. We have good health, we have food and shelter, we have a secure community and occupation. We have family and friends, talents and opportunities. With all those blessings that come to us, it's only too easy to conclude that this life is all that we need, and that's all there is. And to drift among the different blessings without committing ourselves to delivering the goods, okay? We want to drift among the blessings without delivering the goods. But we learn from God's servants in the Bible that they all had a clear sense of destination and investment. They looked forward to a city with foundations whose architect and builder is God himself. By their words and in by their example, those apostles and servants of God challenge us also to live by faith, to accept that God gives us in this life both good and bad is the essential part of the journey to our destination, which is God himself. Let me just conclude by reminding our, us about Abraham. By faith, Abraham journeyed in the land of promise like a stranger in a foreign country. He was expecting a better country, a heavenly one. Hebrews 11, 9. You and I go through this life facing the immediate blessings and challenges that we have, but always we recognize that our destination is life eternal, and our investment is the eternal reward of resurrection. Amen. If you turn in your bulletins to the prayers of intercession, and I'll ask you please to rise, and you respond with a bold print. <clears throat> May children and heirs of God's promise, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. God of community, we pray for the church around the world. Unite us in our love for you. Help us overcome our divisions. 
that we may be encouraged to work together for your sake. Lord, in your mercy. O God of creation, we pray for this hurting earth. Awaken in us a new desire to care for this world and empower us to support agencies, organizations, and individual efforts to heal our environment. Lord, in your mercy. O God of cooperation, we pray for nations of the world embroiled in conflict. Inspire leaders to listen to each other and work toward peaceful solutions to disagreements. Protect the vulnerable, especially children who cannot find safety in their home or their country. Lord, in your mercy. O God of comfort, we pray for all who live with mental or physical illness. Help them find appropriate care and bring healing and wholeness when the path forward seems bleak. At this time, we do continue to pray for these needing your healing mercies, these uh, associated with our congregation, Darbo Hedke, April Severus, Harry Wiggins, Harry Bessonette, Vicki Carr, Bonnie Gifford, uh, Kevin Hogenstein, Mary Almron, Jim Hurlbert, Rick Rickey, uh, Jamie Seval, Sammy Ludrich, and any others who need your healing mercies. We pray also for those college students who have uh, gone back to their um, dormitories and institutions, and we pray for shut-ins and homebound friends of our congregation. Bring healing and wholeness when the path forward seems bleak. Lord, in your mercy. O oh God of compassion, we pray for the young people of the congregation. We know in us your call to welcome children into our midst, and as they grow, Strengthen their faith and their commitment to, and our commitment to them. Lord, in your mercy. God of consolation, we give you thanks for our loved ones who have died, and we pray for all who grieve their passing today. I shine your grace upon all your saints. Lord, in your mercy. Receive these prayers, O God, and those in our hearts, known only to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. You may be seated. I'll remind you that uh, we ask that you uh, put down your offering some um, as you leave, uh, and we will pray the offering prayer at the end of the service. We will receive the, whole, the sacrament by with continuous uh, our communion as we've done before. Uh, and we ask that you uh, receive a wafer and also if you can take a, a cup as it's given to you as you pass by. The Lord be with you. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat, this is my body broken for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. And after giving thanks, he gave thanks. He blessed it and gave thanks, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us join in the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The meal is prepared. Come, receive the sacrament commanded by, by Christ.
Would you please rise? The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Let us pray. We give you thanks that you we give you thanks, O oh Lord, that you blessed us with these uh, gifts. And we ask that you would strengthen us through them in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Lord of life, in the gift of your body and blood, you send the crumbs of our faith into a feast of salvation. Send us forth into the world with shouts of joy, bearing witness to the abundance of your love. In Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. People of God, you are Christ's body, bringing a new life to a suffering world. The Holy Trinity, one God, now bless you, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. And I forgot that there was going to be a presentation of uh, uh, Sunday School Bibles at this time. So before we have our final hymn, uh, into, thank you. Good morning. My name is Crystal Gifford. I'm, <clears throat> excuse me, Sunday School Superintendent. And we had um, several students last Sunday receiving their Bible, and today we are going to be um, gifting some more Sunday School students. So um, if the following would please come forward. Tayton Dahlberg, who will be re receiving her third grade Bible. Sage Martinson, Brianna Clefsted, and Xander Wren, who will be receiving their confirmation Bibles. And if you guys want to stay up here for a little brief prayer, and then we'll take a real quick photo after that. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you that your son was sent not only as a sacrifice for us, but a teacher. And we thank you that in forming disciples, he instructed them and through them us in faith to be servants and soldiers in your kingdom. We pray that you'll bless each of these young people as they continue their growth uh, in, into becoming uh, uh, servants of yours. And particularly, we thank you for their clear minds and their Abilities to understand your wisdom and truth. Bless these Bibles and their use of them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's give a good round of applause to these young people. Thank you. Our concluding hymn is Children of the Heavenly Father. We'll sing all four verses, please. Mm -hmm. 